To help you answer science and math conceptual questions without thinking too much, I'm going to show you how to determine direct and indirect relationships between variables in both science and math formulas. When two variables are on opposite sides of the equal sign, both on top or both in the numerator, or both on the bottom, both in the denominator, but on opposite sides of the equal sign, they are directly related to each other, meaning they have a linear relationship. Now, to demonstrate the direct relationship between these two variables, I want to get both variables to the same side of the equal sign, and I have to do that by dividing by b on both sides, and then I get a over b is equal to 1. Now, suppose I want to keep this one constant, meaning I do not want it to change. I want it to stay at 1, and suppose a equals 1 and b also equals 1. Well, 1 over 1 is equal to 1. Now, suppose that a were to double from 1 to 2, so it becomes a 2. Well, 2 over 1 does not equal 1. So in order to keep this a 1, b must also double at the same rate in order to keep this a 1 because 2 over 2 is equal to 1. Meaning, as a increases, b also increases. So as you can see, when two variables are on opposite sides of the equal sign, both in the numerator or both in the denominator, or when they're on the same side of the equal sign, one on top of the other, they are directly related to each other, meaning as one increases, the other will increase, and as one decreases, the other will also decrease at the same rate. This is a direct relationship. So graphically, with direct relationships where a equals b or a over b equals 1, you could see that as a increases, b increases, which gives us a linear graph or a straight line. With an indirect relationship, we have a variable on one side of the equal sign equal to the inverse of another variable. So on one side of the equal sign, the variable is in the numerator, and on the other side, the variable is in the denominator. Now, if I want to do the same thing as before to demonstrate the inverse relationship between these two variables, I will have to get both variables to the same side. And in this case, I have to do it by multiplying by b on both sides. So then I get a times b is equal to 1. And once again, suppose I want to keep the 1 constant, meaning I don't want it to change. And suppose a equals 1 and b equals 1. Well, 1 times 1 equals 1. Now, suppose I double a to 2. Well, 2 times 1 is not equal to 1. So in order to keep this a 1, I have to reduce this to 1 half because 2 times 1 half is equal to 1, meaning they are indirectly related to each other. As 1 increases, the other must decrease in order to keep the other side of the equation constant. This is an inverse relationship. So as you can see, if a variable on one side of the equal sign is in the numerator and the variable on the other side of the equal sign is in the denominator, or if they are next to each other, both in the numerator, both in the denominator, on one side of the equal sign, they are indirectly related to each other. Graphically, with an indirect relationship where a equals 1 over b or a times b equals 1, you can see that as a increases, b decreases, giving us a negative slope curved graph. So now let's practice with determining the relationship between variables in certain math and science formulas. So here's a popular one, PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law that you may have seen in chemistry class. So what's the relationship between pressure and volume? So notice they're both on the same side of the equal sign and both in the numerator which means they are indirectly related to each other, meaning as pressure increases, volume will decrease or vice versa. What about pressure and temperature? They're on opposite sides of the equal sign and they're both in the numerator, which means they are directly related to each other, which means as pressure increases, temperature will increase, or as pressure decreases, temperature will decrease.
That's a direct relationship between pressure and temperature. Or as temperature increases, pressure increases. So now let's look at a math formula. How about the area of a triangle, which is equal to one half base times height? And I only have to look at the variables for which I am determining relationships among, so I don't have to worry about any constants like one half. So let's look at the relationship between area and height of a triangle. So they're on opposite sides of the equal sign, and they're both in the numerator, which means they are directly related to each other, which seems pretty intuitive. As the height increases, the area will increase. Now, let's look at the relationship between base and height. And let's consider that we're going to keep the area of a triangle constant, meaning the area has to stay the same. So as the height increases, the base has to decrease in order to keep the area constant. So to prove that base and height are inversely related in the area of a triangle formula, I'm going to make a triangle with three pencils, provided they don't roll away from me. And notice that the base is currently the full length of the yellow pencil. And suppose I want to keep the area constant as best as possible, realizing that this is just a demonstration. And suppose I want to increase the height of the triangle. Let's see what happens to the base. So as I increase the height of the triangle, the base decreases to about half the length of the yellow pencil. So they are inversely related. As the height increased, the base decreased. So if I decrease the height, notice that the base increased. So here's another science formula. Power is equal to voltage squared over resistance. Let's determine the relationship between power and resistance. So notice they're on opposite sides of the equal sign. One is in the numerator and the other is in the denominator. This is an indirect relationship. And if you weren't certain of that, well, get them to the same side of the equal sign. And in this case, we have to multiply by R on both sides to get resistance times power equals voltage squared. So now they're both on the same side of the equal sign and both in the numerator, just like before, which means they are indeed inversely related. As resistance increases at constant voltage, power decreases, an indirect relationship. Okay, I am not going to demonstrate voltage and resistance. And what's the butter knife for? So now let's work through some examples of conceptual questions and use our knowledge of relationships among variables in relevant formulas. So here's a science question. Would a pendulum take more or less time to make one full swing on the moon, which has a gravity that is six times less than that of the Earth? So first, the relevant formula is period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of length over the square root of gravity, where t is the period of a pendulum, which is the time it takes to make one full swing. Now the question is asking whether it would take more or less time for the pendulum to make one full swing, which equates to capital T in the formula. And the question stem tells us that gravity is six times less than that of Earth which equates to g in the formula. And 2 pi is just a constant, so we don't have to worry about it, and nothing is mentioned about length, so we can cross that off as well. Now, because time and gravity are both in the formula, we can eliminate d because it can be determined. We can also eliminate c because the two variables will change with respect to each other. Now notice that t is in the numerator on one side of the equal sign and g is in the denominator on the other side of the equal sign. This is an indirect relationship between t and g. So as gravity decreases, the period or time it takes to make one full swing will increase, which means a, more time is correct. Now let's try it with a math question. If the radius of a soup can must stay the same, what would have to be done to the dimensions of the can to increase the volume? The relevant formula for a cylindrical can is volume equals pi r squared times height. 
and once again we could cross off pi because it's just a constant. And the question stem tells us that the radius of the soup can must stay the same, so we can also cross off r squared. Now, we can eliminate a because the circumference is dependent on the radius, and we can also eliminate b because the diameter is dependent on the radius. The question asks how we can increase the volume of the can, which equates to v in the formula. So height is the only variable left in the formula, and because volume is in the numerator on one side of the equal sign, and height is also in the numerator on the other side of the equal sign, it is a direct relationship between volume and height, which means volume will increase if height increases, which means C is correct, the height must increase in order to increase the volume. So hopefully, being able to easily determine direct and indirect relationships between variables and formulas helps you answer science and math conceptual questions without thinking too much. Thank you for watching.